Patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy often have very typical and very impressive features in the echocardiogram. So usually it's not very difficult to make the diagnosis. However, sometimes we also see very subtle changes. Nevertheless, it's very important to make the diagnosis because patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy can die suddenly. As a matter of fact, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is the leading cause of sudden cardiac death in athletes. You will probably recognize some of the names on this list. Those are all individuals and athletes who died because of sudden cardiac death because they had hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So we have to make the diagnosis, and we not only have to make the diagnosis, but we also have to assess the risk of these patients. This will be the issue of this following chapter. Do you actually know that hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is the most common cardiovascular disease in cats? And cats have very similar symptoms, signs, and problems associated with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So most likely, cats will benefit just the same as humans will from new advances in the diagnostics and in the treatment of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Our knowledge about hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is constantly expanding, especially with respect to the genetics, the assessment of risk, and also the contractile mechanics. We've already heard that hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is a genetic disease. It's estimated that approximately 50 to 60% of patients have mutations in at least one of nine sarcomeric genes. Most commonly, it is the beta-myosin heavy chain which is involved. It is an autosomal dominant trait, which means that children have an approximately 50% chance of inheriting the disease. And those patients who do not have a familial history probably have the disease because there is some form of de novo mutation. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy can be associated with several different syndromes, such as the Noonan syndrome, Leopard, or Friedreich ataxia. The manifestation of the disease can be very variable with respect to the morphology. You will see that later when we take a look at the echocardiograms, with respect to the presentation of the patients, and also the prognosis. The onset of the disease can be a childhood, later during adolescence or very late, especially if the cardiac myosin binding protein C is involved. It is actually not such a rare disease. The prevalence has been estimated to be approximately 1 in 500, especially if you consider that many patients only have mild forms of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. What are the manifestations? As already mentioned, we have a very high variability in the manifestation. Some patients remain asymptomatic throughout the entire life. Very often will you find ECG abnormalities, especially in patients who have apical forms of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. You will find the typical pattern of giant negative T waves, as you can see in this example. Patients can develop arrhythmias such as atrial fibrillation and dyspnea which is usually related to diastolic dysfunction, as we will later see when we take a look at examples. Other symptoms include chest pain, atypical chest discomfort, syncope, and in particular sudden cardiac death, because the patients have an increased risk of ventricular fibrillation. And patients do have more arrhythmias in general, so they can also suffer from palpitations. Here is some mortality data, which shows you that the risk of death is higher during childhood and adolescence opposed to adulthood. I already mentioned that hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is the most common cause of sudden cardiac death in athletes. This is from a landmark study which was published 2009 in circulation which investigated sudden cardiac death cases in the US. It was almost 1,866 cases that were analyzed. And you can see that the data correlates well with other studies. This is data which shows, again, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy to be the most prominent cause of sudden cardiac death in athletes, followed by coronary abnormalities. So when should you think about hypertrophic cardiomyopathy? Basically, if we have a septal thickness above 50 millimeters and the patient does not have hypertensive heart disease or any other cause of left ventricular hypertrophy. The patients usually have non-dilated left ventricles, which are fairly small, as in this example. We can see 
asymmetric left ventricular hypertrophy. You can see the septum is thicker than the remaining portions. Often we also have hypertrophy of the papillary muscles. And we can sometimes also see in specific forms LVOT gradients, so an increased velocity within the LVOT. Also take a look at the appearance of the myocardium. You will see that these patients have a speckled appearance of the myocardium and this is also a typical finding that uh, has been described for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. I mentioned earlier that there's a very high variability with respect to the different forms of left ventricular hypertrophy. But in general, we can divide several types, the so-called obstructive forms and the non-obstructive forms. The obstructive forms can involve either the LVOT or the mid of the ventricle, the so-called mid-ventricular obstructive form, and the non-obstructive form can be divided into the asymmetric and the apical type. In the upcoming chapters, we will discuss these different forms and also what other things we can see in patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, especially how they relate to the prognosis of the patient and also to the symptoms.